Matt Bennett, former deputy assistant to President Clinton, and Danny Savalas, legal analyst for MSNBC. Danny, let me start with you and what I just referenced there. Uh, what was reported here, the pressure placed upon uh, Jeff Sessions not to recuse himself from this, uh, this investigation. What does that say to you from a legal perspective? Don McGahn being asked to go to Jeff Sessions, convince him not to do that. It's an it raises an interesting question about the degree of independence of attorneys general from the presidents that appoint them and under whom they serve. And historically, there has been a lot of spectrum from the Nixon administration, which arguably used the DOJ to investigate opponents, uh, to more the uh, the original envisioning of the uh, of the job, which would be as a an independent, almost quasi judicial job. You know, Senator Patrick Leahy observed uh, several years ago. Uh, that the title is not Secretary of the Department of Justice. It's the Attorney General. And that itself implies, the name implies, a modicum of independence, maybe different than other cabinet officials. But reasonable minds could also argue that, like any other cabinet official, they serve at the pleasure and the direction of the President. Matt Bennett, help us here with this confusion or this uh, misapprehension here about the role of the, uh, the Attorney General. What do you make of what's being said by the President and others? I mean, it's absolutely appalling, and it's getting a little old to be hearing how Trump is new to the job and doesn't really understand what's proper uh, as relates to the president and the Justice Department. He's been on the job for a year, and frankly, uh, he should have known this when he took the job in the first place. It is absolutely uh, appalling and dangerous for the president to do many of the things that he's done as it relates to the Department of Justice. He's put pressure uh, first on the FBI director and then he fired him and then he basically admitted obstructing justice in so doing. He uh, has, as you just noted, put pressure on the attorney general. Uh, he has made very clear that he thinks that the Mueller probe should be ended and has all but threatened to end that himself. So he absolutely understands that he is not supposed to be meddling this way, uh, but he believes that the Department of Justice is there to defend him and his family, and in that belief, he is very, very mistaken. Danny Savalas, what do you make of the move here by Republican members of the Senate Judiciary Committee filing this criminal referral to the Justice Department uh, with regard to Christopher Steele, uh, the former British intelligence official who was charged with coming up with this dossier that's been held out time and time again by uh, Republicans? What's the significance of that? Is it a further distraction or is it something more? Uh, will we know or when would we know that the Department of Justice actually did something with it, if at all? It's a move that's tinged with politics, but in a way the Department of Justice, at least not the line prosecutors, but the higher levels of the Department of Justice ha have always been motivated by political decisions. So a criminal referral is little more than a request to prosecute. It's essentially what we would call a private criminal complaint on some level. It's a request to look into or investigate, which the DOJ as an independent body certainly does not need to answer to a congressional member. But but the, it's a little more hazy when we start asking, does he or she need to answer to the president directly? Because the Constitution gives the president the power to appoint, to fire, and to direct the Department of Justice. So again, we always come back to that question, which has vacillated over the many years, which is how independent our attorneys general from the president. Matt Bennett, you were of the uh, the Clinton camp. Uh, we heard this week the FBI has been looking into the Clinton Foundation uh, yet again. You heard the president there a few moments ago referring to perhaps an investigation here into collusion between Hillary Clinton and, and the Russians. What do you make of the continued uh, narrative here involving Hillary Clinton in all of this? Well, I just want to be sure the Republicans understand that Hillary Clinton is not the president and she will not be the president. And she hasn't been secretary of state for five years. Her husband hasn't been president for nearly 20. This is the most preposterous distraction that one could possibly imagine. Let the Justice Department do an investigation. It doesn't matter. They're not probably going to find anything. What does matter is that we have a president who has probably had uh, he or his staff had some form of collusion with our enemies, and he is now obstructing justice in an attempt to, to uncover the facts. That is profoundly dangerous to our democracy, and it's like uh, th this other thing is such a sideshow. Side it's like the crew of the Titanic being reprimanded for a uniform violation after they've hit the iceberg. Danny Savalas, weigh in here. I want to ask you about obstruction of justice in particular here. In light of what we've seen reported over these last few weeks, is that coming into finer focus? It, it, it could be, but 
to take a step back, irrespective of your political leanings, the reason this is dangerous is broader than that. It's the idea that in America, politics are supposed to be a rough and tumble, mudslinging event. And we would devolve into a banana republic if the outgoing political party was uh, vulnerable to investigation by the incoming political party. And then, of course, if the cycle repeats itself once and eventually Donald Trump will leave office, the next president, the next party, if it shifts, could then investigate him and his administration. And that's not the way politics in America were designed. They were meant to be nasty, but they weren't meant to throw people in prison after they leave power. That is a different era, and I'm talking Dark Ages era of politics that we do not want to return to. Dan Savalas, very quickly, this book, Fire and Fury, very much the through line through a lot of our conversations here uh, today and indeed throughout the whole week, and the president has expressed his distaste for what went into it and the book itself, and he's threatened a suit against Michael Wolff and his publisher. How likely is he to win something like that if, in fact, a libel suit is brought? Let me start. He's not likely. The odds that he's going to even file a lawsuit are 0.0. .0. The odds of winning it, if it were ever filed, are similarly in the 0.0, .0 range. And the reason is this. He sent a cease and desist letter. These are very inexpensive tools. They're a letter that's sent out. And, you know, companies use them a lot to threaten the little guy into uh, capitulating. And it often works. It's cheap. And it doesn't involve any long-term commitment. There's a big difference between sending a C&D letter and actually filing a lawsuit. And I think the president and his team always knew that. Danny, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Matt, thanks to you uh, as well. Joining us from Washington, D.C.